Hello, welcome to this video on how to make a nice little Christmas game in Scratch. So, first things first, let's go to the Scratch website. So if you go to Google, you can type in Scratch. And it'll be the first thing that comes up on Google. So Scratch Imagine Program Share. And then in Scratch, if you click on Create at the top, it'll open up the editor. Now it's better if you've got an account on Scratch, it's much easier to save the game. You can save it otherwise, you can download it to your computer, but if you want to then open it again, you have to go on to the Scratch website, click File, then click Load from your computer and find it. It won't just open if you click on it. So what I'm going to do is create a reindeer game today. So just a quick tour through Scratch. So on the left here, you've got all the blocks that are color coded. So there's different categories that match what they actually do. So if I wanted something that's going to make the character on the screen move, I'll look in motion. If I wanted something that's going to change how it looks, I'll have a look in looks and so on. You can navigate these by clicking on the colors on the left and find the block you want. And then we drag these into the center, which we call the kind of the scripting area. Okay, Aradel script here. And the reason it's called scripting area is just like in a play, the script kind of gives instructions to the characters on what to do. And it's the same thing in Scratch. Your blocks are your instructions, and they are telling the character what to do and when to do them. So we drag any blocks into the center. So say I want the character to say something. When I press the green flag, I've got the green flag block here, which is in events. And then I want it to say hello for two seconds. I click the green flag and the cat says it. So it follows these one by one, one after the other. Okay, on the right, we've got the sprites or corlinei. Okay, the sprites. These are like the actors in our play. So they are what do something, they act in some way depending on what scripts we give them. So I don't want a cat for this game. I want a reindeer. So I just want a reindeer's head. So if we delete the cat by pressing on the pin, and then I click on this button down the bottom right, choose a sprite. I should be able to find one called reindeer. If I use the search uh, tool up here, reindeer, and there he is, or she. I think this is Rudolph. By clicking on it, it adds it into my game as one of the characters, one of the sprites. Now, I only want the head of the reindeer, I don't want the whole body. Because what we're going to be trying to make is like a whack-a-mole game where you click on the reindeers to get points. So if I want to change how it looks here, um, and I don't want the rest of his body, what I can do is change his costume. So every sprite has a costume, so my Pope Coraline can get a costume. Like Gwisk Gwanel. So if I click on costumes, he's only got one, this reindeer. And what I want to do is use the mouse tool, which is already selected, and I'm going to just drag a box across all the parts that I don't want. Okay, and then I'm going to press backspace on the keyboard to delete it. Now you'll notice that here there's a little crosshair, and that tells me where the center of the image is. So I want the middle of anything I want in this sprite's costume to be on this crosshair here. Otherwise, we'll have some issues where it's slightly off center. So I'm going to again use the mouse tool, drag and select every part of the image, the reindeer's head, and you can see now there's a cross in the middle of it. So if I now drag this down, click and drag, and it kind of locks onto the crosshair. And now that makes sure that the head of the reindeer is always going to be on uh, or in the center of the image. Okay, now I can click back on code to do this next part. Okay, we've got the costume we want. So what I want this reindeer to do is to kind of appear randomly on the screen. And then when I click on it, I will get points. So if I use events because I want something to happen when I start the game and usually when, when we start games in scratch we click the green flag up here so we want to use the event block so these are things that when something happens you can then react to them in some way it could be when the green flag is clicked when someone presses some kind of key 
or if someone clicks on the sprite. You can then give instructions on what to do when those things happen. So when the green flag is clicked, I'm going to use. I'll just zoom in to make it bigger on the screen. So when the green flag is clicked, I want this reindeer to make sure that it's actually showing on the screen. At the moment, it is showing by default, but it's going to be showing and hiding throughout the game. So I need to make sure it's showing. So if you click on looks, there's a block called show. I'm going to drag it and attach it just like so under the green flag click. So the first thing that happens is it makes sure the reindeer's head is showing. Now, what I wanted to do once it's showing is actually appear in a random position. So I'm going to go to motion and there's a block called go to random position. Now I might actually, I'm going to put this before show because I want it to go to a random position when it's hiding and then appear on the screen. Okay. And then I want it to maybe wait where it is for a couple of seconds before hiding again. So if I want something to wait in a position, maybe we'll wait, wait one second. So in control, this controls <laughs> the flow of the program. So how long something does something or if it repeats something, you can control it using the control blocks. That's why they named that. So I'm just going to use the wait one second block. So now that reindeer is going to, when I click the green flag, go to a random position. It's going to make sure it's showing on the screen. Wait one second. And then I want it to hide again. So looks, so it's the opposite of the show block. Go down to hide. Drag it in. And let's just test that that works. When you click the green flag, you'll notice that this lights up in gold, just showing that that is currently running. It's currently doing those instructions. And the reindeer went to a random position on the screen. It waited there for a second and then it hid. So let's try again. Now it's in a different position. So every time it's picking a new position at random. Okay. Now, if I want to repeat this, I need to use something called iteration. And this concept um, is basically just when you repeat something over and over again. So, um, Angamrag, Iladroth, Iteri, Iteri, your guy. So, iteration, Iteri. And that's just whenever you use a bit of code more than once and you want it to just repeat. Because I could copy and paste it several times, but that'll be annoying. Programming languages are clever and you can use blocks such as forever. So this is a loop. And you can see that with this loop, you can see a little arrow pointing to kind of suggest that once you get to the bottom of what's in here, go back to the top of it. And because there's a gap, I'm going to attach it above all four because I want it to repeat all four of those blocks over and over again forever. So if I put it here, it then kind of swallows the rest of the blocks and everything inside here now is going to repeat. It's going to go do this, 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 this. Once it reaches the bottom, go back to the top and repeat. So let's just play. And now we've got a nice little game where I can click on the reindeer. It's moving about. If I click it, nothing happens. So all we've done is given the reindeer instructions, cover the add eye, on how to move about the screen. So it's movement behavior. So it only has one script for that. And then we'll need a different script telling it what to do if it gets clicked on. Because you want to be able to click on the reindeer. So that's a different event. We don't want it to happen when we click the green flag that you get a point. We want to get a point when we click on the reindeer. So if we go to events, so we're looking for when the sprite is clicked, which is here. I'm going to put it just next to it, this one. It doesn't really matter where you put these scripts as long as they're correct. Now, when the sprite is clicked, I want it to hide so I know that it's, it's clicked. I could do something like maybe make it highlight or make a noise, but for now, we'll just make it hide immediately. So when the sprite is clicked, I want it to hide. And again, we're going to make it wait a second. And then we're going to make it show again.
So let's just see if this works. So it kind of works, okay? There we go. So every time I click it, I know that it's, it's happening. Now, that's great. It's reacting to me clicking it, but it doesn't do anything like give me any points or anything. And when you want some kind of points or a score system in a game in Scratch, you need to have a way of storing how many points you've got and keeping track of it. So what we need to use to do that is something called a variable. Nuidin, okay, a variable. So if you click on the variables block, the little category down here, the orange one, you can see there's already a variable block called my variable. And that's a really bad name for a variable because it doesn't tell us any information about what it is that you're storing, or what's that representing. Okay, so there's a couple of things we can do, but I'm going to show you how to delete it. So if you right click on my variable here, then click delete the my variable variable and it's gone. I'm going to make a new one called score or points. I think we'll call it points. So I click that, this box appears and we want to keep it for all sprites. There are times when you'd use for this sprite only, but for now we're just going to use for all sprites. And I'm going to call it points. Now in general, when we, when we make variables, there's usually a specific convention, a way we write it. So in lots of languages, it's um, P-O, all, all lowercase P-O-I-N-T-S. And then if you have more than one word, you'd put a capital letter for the second word. With Scratch, it's not that important, but you want to keep it the same. You don't want to name a variable in one way, say, with a capital letter at the start, and then the rest of your variables do different things for it. You want to keep it the same. So I'm going to always start with a capital letter. And if there was more than one word, so if it was um, reindeer points, I'd have a capital letter for every different word in there. Okay, but we're going to stick with points. And you can see once you click OK, it puts a little scoreboard on the screen for you and it has zero. Now, that's great. If I play the game, I'm not going to get any points because we haven't told the game what points are or how they're used in the game or when to get them. So you can see now that I've created this, this variable called points, I can store different values in it. I can set the value of it to be something or I can change the variable of it, the valuable, change the value of it. So if I want to add one point, I want to change the current value of it by one. I'm going to add one to it. So I'm going to put it in here. So when the reindeer hides, I change the points by one. And let's see if that works. Okay, so now we've got a point system. But there's a problem with this. It's working fine. I like it. If I restart the game, I still got 11 points. So how can I fix that? So I can't use change because I don't know. Say if I use change and I put minus 11. But what if I play the game and I get 12 points and I'll end up with 1.1 1 .1 and start next. So I need to make sure that every single time we restart the game, when we click the green flag, that we set the points back to zero. So I need this block. And where I'm going to put this is it, I want it to be the first thing the game does when the green flag is clicked and we have a block for that here so if i put this above the forever because there'll be problems if you put it in here where every single time the reindeer hides it goes back and sets the points to zero so we want to put it above the forever underneath the green flag clicked and now you can see my points go back to zero okay so we've got a nice little game already but we can add some more stuff to this to make it nicer. So first of all, let's add a background. And you always need to be careful when you add a background because, well, I'll show you what happens. So I'm going to choose a backdrop. I don't know if there's any Christmassy ones. Um, 
I guess the Arctic one would be a good a good decision. Or even slopes. We'll go for the Arctic. Okay. So now, that was easy. We've added a backdrop. And actually, I've just noticed that Scratch has fixed one of the issues I've used to have with it. Where usually when you add a, a backdrop, what happens is it highlights the stage. So if I click on this, you can see now that instead of the reindeer being highlighted, the stage is highlighted. And usually people will go, oh no, I've lost all my code. But actually, you can put instructions in the background as well. So you might have instructions that aren't for the reindeer or aren't for any of the sprites that you've got. So you would put them in the backdrop to hide them away or to keep them in a place you know where to find them. So if that happens, then you need to click back on the reindeer if you want to see the instructions and you want to continue giving instructions to the reindeer. Okay, just be careful not to click the, the bin. If you do end up accidentally clicking the bin, go up the top, click edit, and there's a button called restore sprite. It's basically an undo button, but it doesn't keep track of lots of stuff, so you can't keep clicking it. So you can only recover the last thing you accidentally deleted, basically. Okay. So we've got a background. background. Now, why don't we add in a high score system? Oh, no. Before we get a high score, there's no time, time limit. We can just keep clicking forever. So we want to add in a timer. Now, it would make sense to put this in the backdrop, actually. But because we've only got one character in this game, I'm going to leave it in the same place within the reindeer's instructions. So not only is the reindeer going to know how to move about the screen and what to do when it gets clicked on, but it's also going to keep track of the time in the game for us. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit so I've got more space. I might put it down here. And this is going to be the script for how to keep track of time. Now the time is going to start when we start the game. So the event we want is going to be when the green flag is clicked. So when the green flag is clicked, I want it to start counting down. Now if we're keeping track of time, just like we're keeping track of points, we need a variable, Nuidin, to do that. So a new variable name. I'm going to call it time. Remember, I use a capital first letter for the points, so I'm going to keep it the same kind of convention for this. And then you'll notice that it still says points on all these blocks. But I want to set the time. So if I drag the block in for now, this little drop down arrow, you can click on it. And all your variables will be listed there. So you can choose which one you want. So I want to set the time to be well, not zero. I wanted to count down. So maybe we'll give 30 seconds. So we'll set it to 30. And then I want to take one away. So I wanted to change my time. Now, if I add one by putting one in there, to so take one away, I need to put in minus one. And I want to do this 30 times because that's how many times I've got, got to do it. So what I can do is repeat this a certain amount of times. And it's 30. Now, this isn't the best way to, to actually do this. I might show you how to fix it at the end, but it works. So let's see if it works. Okay, so if you the eagle-eyed viewers there, out there, You'll see that it does start at 30, but it goes so fast that it counts down to zero almost immediately. And that's because the computer can think a lot faster than once, do one thing every second. So we need to slow the computer down and say, whoa, wait a second before you take one off the time. So we need to tell it to wait a second and then take one off the time. And now we've slowed the computer down so it's counting at the right speed. And it'll count all the way down to zero. And then what we want to do is once it's finished repeating this, it's done these two blocks 30 times. And the time is then going to be zero. 
we're going to add in a, a stop all button or block sorry so once it's repeated 30 times the next thing it'll do is it'll move on and it'll stop the whole game and there we go you can see the green flag is no longer highlighted okay this isn't red anymore it's gone off because the reindeer stopped moving around so we've got movement we've got when the sprite is clicked and we've got the reindeer counting down the time So at the end, when the time runs out, you can no longer click the reindeer, although technically you can. So what we wanted to do is, at, right at the end, just before it stops the game, we want to hide the reindeer as well. So then people can't just click and get an extra point at the end once the game is finished. Okay, and that's pretty much a pretty good game. Now, what I was talking about earlier is how to fix this. So we don't have to say if I wanted to change how much time people have in my game. I wanted to change it to 45 seconds. I have to change it in two places. Otherwise, the time will never run out. So how do we get around that? Well, we can use something called an if statement. Okay, that can add os. And this is something called selection in programming. So um, I can't remember the Welsh word for selection at the moment for some reason. Dewis. Uh, it'll come back to me. Um, but yes, this is selection. So, in order to do this, what we want to do is just say, if the time is zero, then we stop the game. Okay. So it's going to check every time, is the time zero? But we can, what we can do is use repeat until the time is zero. So I'm going to drag out what was in this loop and put it into this new one. I'm then going to drag off the hide and stop ball. I'm going to delete this block by dragging it into the left here. And then you can drag that one back on. Always click the, the topmost block you want to drag because if you click one below it'll drag it off but if you click the top one it'll keep it done together now we're setting the time to 45 and we want to repeat until the time is equals to zero so this kind of um, diamond shaped block it fits with operators or some blocks in sensing you see the diamond shaped so operators is kind of the maths ones and you can check if something equal, if it's more than or less than something. Okay, there's a few other things you can do as well, but the equals block is what we need. And we want to say, repeat this these instructions until the time reaches zero. So if I want to use my time block, the value I've currently got in the time variable, okay, I can drag the top block here, the rounded one. And it can fit inside the equals block on the left there. Repeat until time equals 50. Now, we don't want 50, so I can click inside and change this to zero. And now this is much better because it doesn't matter what value I put in here. I don't have to change it in another place. It's always going to check when it reaches zero. So it's a, bit, a little bit more efficient and it means I don't have to change things in multiple places. Okay, so that's fixed that. Now, it's always good to have a high score in your game. If you've got a certain time limit and a certain amount of points you're trying to get in that time limit, let's see how many we can get to keep the high score. And this isn't too difficult to add in. It's just you have to think a bit carefully about how it works. So, we're going to use an if block. Okay. I said we we're going to use one earlier, but we ended up using repeat until. But this is when we're going to use an if block. Okay, do wish shed, I think is the word. In Welsh, selection. Now, once I've taken one away from the time, I've waited a second, I've taken one away. Done that enough times till it reaches zero. So the time has run out. Then, I want to do a check here. 
just before it finishes, I want to check something. Okay, so I want to see if the points is more than the high score. So if the points I've just got is more than the high score, then I want to set the high score to be my current amount of points. Okay, so I want to kind of overwrite the high score with the points I've just got. So to do that, we need to check if something is more than something else. Now we have a variable for points, but we also need to keep a separate one for the high score because they won't always be the same. Points change when we play, but the high score only change at the end of the game if they're more than the high score. So we're going to click on make a variable again. High score. Um, so I don't really know how to put this. Usually we'd keep it without more than one space, but it's not too important for Scratch. So we'll leave it so it looks nice. High score. Now I want to check if my points, so what's stored in the points variable, you can think of variables like a box that you put values inside it. So what's currently in my points variable, no it didn't points, is that more than the current high score? If it is, then we're going to set the high score to be the points, whatever I just got. So what's stored in my points variable? And that's all you need for a high score system. Now what's easy is my high score is currently zero. So I should be able to beat it. Now you've got, I've already done it. So the time's a bit high. I'm going to just change it to 10 seconds. Oop, hit the mic there to just make the point. Okay, so I'm getting lots of points here. And now, yep, yeah, seven is more than zero, so it overwrote. My points was more than the high score, so now I set the high score to be what my points currently is, which is seven. And there you go, we've got a high score system. If I don't beat my high score, if I only get a couple of points, then what's going to happen here? Okay, so once the time ran out, it checked. Is the points more than the high score? Well, points is two. High score is seven. So that's not true. So if something's not true with an if statement, it doesn't do the instruction inside it. It just ignores it and moves on to the next thing. So it didn't overwrite the high score this time. Okay. So that's essentially a reindeer game. Now what I could do as an extension, and I, I haven't done this for a while, I might try and put certain places that the reindeer can appear. I don't know if you've played a whack-a-mole game where there's certain holes that the mole appears in, you have to hit it with that little mallet you got. We can try and emulate that or do something similar in, in Scratch. Now I'm going to move this high score by clicking and dragging it up over here so there's a bit more space. And then I'm going to set certain positions, maybe three by four, so 12 positions that the reindeer can appear in. So this is going to be a bit more tough and don't worry if you can't follow it because it's a bit more advanced. So what I'm going to do is make a list of all of the X positions and then all the Y positions I want it to be in. So if I get my reindeer to show and to do that when I'm programming, I can click on this here. I'm going to need to make a list and I'm going to call it X positions. And then I'm going to make another list. I'm going to call it Y positions. Okay, so I've got X and Y values here. They're a bit big and in the way. So I'll drag them over here. So the first one, oh, I clicked the reindeer. Let's um, sort that out. So if I want to move the reindeer by clicking and dragging, I'm going to just detach this for now. That means when the sprite clicks, nothing happens, so I can drag him about. Okay. 
So maybe I want the first position to be here. So I can see that, that is minus 177 in x, and in y it's 82. So I'm going to add in my x, minus 177, and y, 82. And I'm going to do another one down here. So it's minus 180, minus 13 in the y. And you can do this a numerous amount of times. Minus 178. Minus 94. I'm going to just keep doing this now. I might, I might only do a few. You can obviously add more as much as you want. Minus 59, 43. Maybe I'll do three more. Just so you get the idea of what I'm supposed to be doing here. And my y value is minus 48. We'll go down here, minus 59. Minus 1, 2, 3. I'm just going to move these out of the way. Okay, 1, 0, 5. Minus 21. So this takes a bit of time to set up. Minus 76. And what I would do is I'd make up at the start of the game, I'd always refill this with values I want instead of doing this manually I'd have a blocks I'd have a set of blocks that fill the lists every time just in case someone actually deletes one of these and gets a bit messed up okay so we filled our list with x and y positions of where we want the reindeer to go on the screen using the coordinates after we move them so I'm just going to drag this back attach it so that when I click the sprite I get points Okay, now, we have go to random position. So this is what we want to change. We're changing the movement of it because we want it to only go to a certain amount of positions on the screen. So instead of go to random position, I'm going to take away that. So I don't need random. I want to put this in, the, in here. And I'm going to go to specific coordinates now this will always go to the same position if i use this block because it's always minus 117 minus 125 which as you notice is exactly what's in here so it uses where the sprite is currently for these values you can change them obviously but what we want to do is use values from in here now to do that, I want to make a variable for the position it's going to go to. So you can see in our list, I made sure that they all matched up. So the X and Y values linked together and they both got the number one. So this is the first position. It's got an X value and a Y value. Then we've got number two. This is the second position and third position and so on. So I want to make a variable that just tells us which position to go to. So we're going to go for position with a capital P to keep um, the same kind of convention throughout. Now, when I go to, before I do that, I'm going to set the position to be a random number between one and, well, I've got nine positions in mine. So in operations, you can use a block called pick random. Okay, you can drag it into the position block there. And I've got nine positions, so I want to pick a random number between one and nine. So it's going to choose one of the nine positions I put the reindeer in just now. And then I want it to, in here, I want it to get, okay, find number one, position one, and give me the value from the x positions list to go in here and in the y one find me the value of position one from the y positions list so to do that 
go back to variables because we're accessing our lists now. So in here, we've got variables and lists. Okay, and lists are great because you can keep lots of the same kind of stuff within one thing. So instead of saying, having loads of variables, position one, position two, position three, position four, I can just have a list of these things. So I want to get item, so ever stored, so these are the items, item one, item two, item three. And I want it to be whatever the random number was, so position. Okay, so I pick a random number between one and nine, and I store that in my position variable. Then I want to find the x value of that position. Okay, so go to whatever the number is that's stored in the position that's been picked. So whatever number it is that matches the position that's been picked, one to, one to nine. And the same thing, I'm going to run out of space on here, so I might zoom out a bit. The same thing, but with the Y value. So I'm going to right click on the item block here, the red one, and duplicate it. I'm going to change it from X positions to Y positions. And I'm going to drag it in here. And then all we need to do is attach this again inside the block. And now, instead of going to a random position, completely random every time on the screen, this reindeer will only go to the positions that I chose. Okay. So I'm going to hide these lists now. So to hide a list, you can see on the left-hand side, with both variables and lists, and so now I've done a rest try, you can click on these to hide them or show them, these little checkboxes. So let's see, the reindeer should only go in, into one of the nine positions that I picked. Okay, so those were some of the positions that I chose. So what you could do then is maybe put a background behind it, so around each position with circles, like a, a little um, a black circle, so it looks like they're popping their head out of something. Um, so let's say I want to change the backdrop to do that. So in here, I can change the backdrop by clicking on backdrops. Now, sometimes the backdrops are what we call bitmap um, files. And that's not great because it's they don't look great and they're hard to edit. So if you click the button convert to vector, what this does is it allows you to put layers on top rather than replacing the colors that are there ready. You can stick things on top of it. And then I can put some circles around. Now the problem I've got is I can't remember exactly where I put the positions. But you could imagine that if I put one there, I can cop copy and paste using control and V or copy and paste buttons up here. Okay, I think I might have put one up here somewhere and so on. So it looks like the reindeer's then popping out of these places. I can't remember exactly where I put these. It was something like this. And maybe behind that, so if we make a something that looks like a bit of wood maybe, so you can use these colors, these fill colors here. So this is the controls, the actual colors. Brightness, you need to move it up to see the colors appear. And then saturation kind of makes it how colorful. Do you want it to be dull or more colorful? So I want kind of an, a browny color, so maybe orangey, something like this. And I'm gonna make a box that goes behind it. Now, that's obviously covered all the circles, but the circles are still there. They're behind this box. So here you can see, I can click back. Now, slight problem with that is it's gone behind the background that we've got. So what I can do is bring it a little bit forward. So bring it forward once. And now it's in front of the background, but behind all these circles that we made. And then what we've got is a reindeer appearing. Okay, I didn't get the circles in the perfect places, but you can work on that 
I got some of them right, so it's not too bad in order to get it to appear in the right place. Okay, and one more thing that I'll do just to make it a pretty cool game is add in a slightly different reindeer costume so that you can get some more points if you click on it. Okay. So I know this has gone a bit more complex, but obviously you can decide how far you go with this game. So I don't just want this costume, reindeer. I want to have two costumes and depending on which one appears, you get more points if you click on a different one. So I click on costumes. I'm going to make it very similar. So I'm going to right click on this reindeer one here. Duplicate it. And then I'm going to edit this one slightly. Okay, and I'm going to call this reindeer extra points. Okay, so it's got a different name. It's always good to name your costume so it makes sense to you. And to anybody else that looks at your code. Now, what can I do? Maybe I'll change his nose to be a different colour. So it's not Rudolph. But you can have a gold. Or yellow. And maybe we'll change his antlers to be yellow as well. Okay. So... Now we've got different costumes. We look slightly different. So what we can do is every time that he goes to position and we show, why not add in that it picks, it decides whether it's the normal reindeer costume or this kind of glowing yellow one. So let's go to looks and you can find a block called switch costume. Okay, and then what we're going to add in is, because each costume, if you click on the costumes again, each costume has a number next to it. There's one and two. What we can do is switch the costume and we can actually put numbers in here. So I'm going to go to operators and pick a random number one to two so just before we show it's either going to pick costume one or costume two let's just check that that works okay so you can see it's randomly choosing between the two good now how do we get more points if it's got one costume or the other well, we can check when we click on it, which costume it currently has. So let's switch the costume. No, sorry. If we're ever checking something, if we're ever checking something, then we use an if statement. Okay, but we could instead use an if else. So this means if there's two different things we want to do, so if something's true, we do something. But if it's not, we do something else, a different thing. We can use an if else statement, which is like an if, but it's got an extra part here. Okay. Now, I want to put inside there, if it's wearing the normal costume, I get one point. So I'm just going to drag this up over here for now and place the change point by one in here. So if it's wearing... Okay, so if costume equals is what we want. And we'll check. Down here in looks, towards the bottom, there's a block called costume number. If I drag that in there. And you can even do it with costume name as well, but we'll do it for costume number. Now, if the costume number is one, okay, if we go to costumes, this is number one, the normal one. You can see it there. So if it's costume number one, without the yellow parts, then we just want to add one to the points. But what do we do if it's not that? So if it's anything other than one, and the only other option is two. So if it's the other costume, I'm going to right click on points, duplicate it. I want to change it by 
three points. Okay, so you get three points now if the costume is yellow. So let's just test that. There you go. It went up by three. That went up by one. And so on. Okay, so I got a much better high score there. I've just noticed something I want to get rid of. We don't really want the position to appear on the screen. That's not for people to see. That's for the computer to use in the background. So let's go to variables and get rid of position by clicking on the checkbox there. So that's essentially a game. Now you, you could think, well, we don't want the special reindeer to appear at the same amount of times really as the normal reindeer. So we could fix that. And one way you could do that is, well, let's do it. Instead of just using switch costume to pick either one or two, because that's, you've got a 50, 50 chance. It's either one or it's two. We could use an if statement. Okay. No, we'll use an if else. We could use an if else statement. But we also need to use a new variable. So it's getting quite quite a lot of variables now. I'm going to call this random number. Oh, I'm using a different convention again now. So sticking to the same convention, this is how I name things. So I want to set the random number. And I want to do this before the if statement. Set random number to Pick a random number between 1 and maybe 5. So there's 5 possible choices. And then I'm going to say, if once you've picked a random number, so it's like rolling a dice but with only 5 sides. Well, actually, let's say it's like rolling dice, 1 to 6. There's 6 options. So this is just rolling a dice, essentially. And then we'll say, if the dice lands on 1, so there's 1 in 6 chance of that happening. Okay, so if the random number or the dice lands on one, then we'll switch the costume to the reindeer with extra points, the yellow one. But if it's not one and it's either two, three, four, five, or six, well, there's a lot more chance of that happening. We're going to switch the costume not to the reindeer extra points, but just to the reindeer, the normal reindeer costume. And we can place this all inside our forever loop and remember to place the show in as well. So now we're rolling a dice to see, okay, um, it, what number is going to land on? One to six. Then if that dice lands on one, so you've got a one in six chance, we switch the costume to reindeer extra points. So it's that golden one will appear so we can, we can get more points possibly if we click on it. But otherwise, if it doesn't land on one every other time, just show the normal reindeer costume. So let's see, it should be the normal one a lot more and occasionally, there you go, it, the gold one appears so we can get more points. Oh, I don't know, yes. So, just to tidy up again, you want to hide the random number because again, it's not for the user to know, it's not for the person playing it, it's for the computer to do it in the background. And there we are, I think that's somewhere we'll end there. We've done it quite a lot there. And obviously it depends how far you want to go, how far you want to understand, but hopefully I've explained it well enough. And I hope you enjoy Scratch. There's probably going to be more, some more Christmas, video, um, Christmas game tutorials I'll put up. Um, and I hope it's helped. Thank you very much.